Welcome back, MVP. Scribo here with you again from Mutantville.com. And today, or this time rather, I'm going to do a very different kind of video because I'm going to talk about MMA, aka Mixed Martial Art, which includes the UFC, Strike Force, uh, Bellator, Dream from Japan, and all kinds of other things. So I'm just going to kind of talk about random events. And uh, I'll try to give you a spoiler warning before I go into anything specific. Because, believe it or not, I've been a fan of mixed martial arts for years and years. You can see here I have my pair of my own boxing, worn out looking boxing gloves right here that I use to work out on my heavy bag out back. Um, I actually ordered the very first UFC in 1994, maybe it was 93. Uh, when it came on pay-per-view, it was something I was super excited about. I, I remember seeing all the ads for it on cable at the time, the entire month leading up to the event. And then when I watched it, I was kind of underwhelmed about it. Um, and then after seeing Hoist Gracie win the entire event, I was like, what is this? What happened? You had no idea because he was just, it looked like he was just laying on people and they were just giving up. You know, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't until about uh, three UFCs later that you realize this guy was really doing something because he kept choking everybody out. And then, you know, the whole Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu explosion uh, happened and, um, you know, everybody that was into martial arts started uh, pursuing uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at the time. But anyway, so I've been following the sport all the way since then. So it's been, been quite a while. It's just now gained mainstream recognition over the past five years with the advent of the Ultimate Fighter on Spike TV. But anyway, what's coming up? Uh, well, we just had the big Strike Force event, so I'm going to give you some spoilers for that for the Rogers versus Overeem event. Uh, Alistair Overeem used to be a 200-pound five, 205-pound fighter, excuse me, who fought um, almost primarily in Pride. He had a lot of classic fights with like Chuck Liddell. That was a good brawl in Japan. Uh, Chuck wound up beating him. Um, he fought uh, Vitor Belfort after after Belfort had lost to Ortiz in UFC Japan sent him I mean the UFC sent him overseas. Uh, Dana White was always smart like that. He would not send his top guys to the UFC. He would send his guys that had just lost to the top guys to to Pride, so that if they lost in Pride, it's like well, so what? They just lost in the UFC. So, but anyway, Overeem had beaten Beef Belfort at the time. Um, over the past few years, Overeem has exploded from a 205-pound guy to like 250 pounds or something. The guy is huge and massive. There are a lot of rumors, or well, basically baseless accusations of him being on steroids. But anyway, he's been fighting a K1, doing really well. He made the finals this year, although he did not make the actual final fight. He made the, the final event, uh, which is a big achievement in itself, losing out only to the top, top kickboxers in the world, which is a big achievement. But he won the heavyweight title, I believe, back in 2007, and he hasn't defended it. It's been a couple of years, and that's the kind of the fishy part. Well, Strike Force doesn't lock their fighters into contracts, so they they let them fight in different organizations. That's why it's appealing to uh, to a lot of fighters, as opposed to the UFC, who locks you into a contract. They own you lock, stock, and barrel. You do what they say. They own your likeness, so on and so forth. But before I digress. Overeem finally comes back. Now the fight we want him to see, we want to see him in, is versus Fedor, who's finally in Strike Force. That doesn't happen because Overeem has been floating around. They haven't been able to get him back in America. They, Strike Force has been keeping Fedor busy. You know they had him fight Rogers for his first fight. He was scheduled to fight Verdum at this same event, but he was pulled out of it basically by his management, the M1 organization over contract disputes. So that's a whole bunch of nonsense. M1 is really screwing up Fedor's career. He needs to be fighting these top guys. The reason I still consider him pound for pound number one is because he beat Krokop and Noguera when those two guys were beating everybody. Okay, That's how you determine a number one guy. When you got Krokop who's walking around kicking everybody he fights in the head and knocking them out cold and Fedor beats him. And then you got Noguera who's taking everybody, tying them into knots, choking them unconscious and then Fedor beats him. That's how you determine the top guy in the world, okay? The problem is that was five years ago. Fedor hasn't faced the top, top guys anymore. But let's get back to Overeem versus Rogers because Overeem is a guy that Fedor needs to fight now, okay? Overeem basically tooled Rogers, in case you don't know. Rogers has been a part-time MMA fighter. He's really just a big, strong guy that can punch, and he believes in his punch. That's it. He's got no submission skills. He... <laughs> 
probably barely understands the understands the ground basics. But uh, you know, Overeem just tooled him. He tossed him around like he was a kid. Got on top of him and, and pounded on him till the ref stopped it. It was really pretty pathetic. But that was what the fight should have looked like. So Strike Force, they need to get on the ball and make Fedor versus Overeem as soon as possible. Unlike the UFC, who is on the ball, who is currently making Lesnar versus Carwin, which is going to be an explosive match. I'm really excited about the UFC heavyweight division right now. They have a lot of top, top, tough guys. Big, strong guys that know how to fight, know how to wrestle. Strong as oxes, okay? <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Brock Lesnar when he comes back from this bout of diverticulitis that he's had over the past year, which is a bad, bad chronic illness, okay? That's something that, that can stay with somebody forever. So it's entirely possible he can get into training for the Shane Carwin fight and then pull out again because of this. I know this from, you know, experience in my own life. I've never had it myself, but I've worked in the medical field before, and, and uh, diverticulitis is a chronic illness. So Shane Carwin is a beast. Now, from what I understand... Lesnar has the better credentials as a wrestler, okay? Uh, Shane Carwin uh, has some physical dimensions that are a little bit bigger, so he's maybe stronger than, than Lesnar. Um, I think pound for pound, Carwin probably punches stronger and better, but uh, Lesnar, I don't know, maybe he mixes things up a little bit, a little bit better. I like Lesnar because he trains with um, Eric Paulson. Eric Paulson is like a, a two-step descendant from Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. Paulson trained under uh, Dan Inosanto, who was Bruce Lee's number one student, the guy chosen to to carry on teaching his art, okay? And Inosanto started um, Eric Paulson on understanding, you know, how to mix up martial arts and understanding the various ranges. Paulson was one of the, the mixed martial arts pioneers. Uh, he was a Shudo lightweight champion in Japan for, for years. And uh, now you got this guy coaching Lesnar. So Lesnar is being brought along by the right people. But the thing about Carwin is he understands his identity. He's not a guy trying to understand mixed martial arts. He knows he's a wrestler. He knows he can hit hard. So he comes in, he tries to wrestle you. He tries to get you in a position where he can just hit you hard in your face and knock you out. And so far he's done it. When he beat Mir, all bets are off, okay, because Mir is a bad dude. He's probably the number two submission fighter, heavyweight submission fighter in, in mixed martial arts history. I mean, Mir has, has submitted a lot of guys, broken a lot of arms, put a lot of people to sleep, okay, and, and Carwin handled him. I'm a Mir fan. His attitude gets on my nerves sometimes, but, you know, I like him because he's a good jiu-jitsu guy. He tries to submit people. But so, Lesnar versus Carwin, that's going to be some interesting, interesting stuff. Now, another match I'm excited about is the Kung Lee versus Scott Smith rematch. Now, I was big on the Kung Lee wagon. I mean, the guy was undefeated in his entire martial arts career, you know, which, which spanned his history of doing Taekwondo, of doing um, Sancho overseas, doing Sancho here in the States completely undefeated he had six matches in mma stopping everybody in one form or another with his brutal kicks and and just he has the most amazing throws well he fought scott smith back in december after he's been making movies for almost two years and he he tooled scott smith for like two and a half rounds but scott smith is one of those guys if you don't knock him out and take him out He's going to be there the entire fight, and he has a punch, and he believes in that punch. And that's when guys believe in their punches means they're going to come forward and throw with bad intentions. And that's exactly what Scott Smith did. He caught – people say Kung got tired. He didn't get tired. I mean, any, everybody has to take a blow. They have to take a breather after they've thrown a combination, whether it's a series of punches or a series of punches and kicks. And that's exactly what Kung had just done. He had thrown some good kicks and some good punches, and he was taking a breather. And then as he was trying to keep Smith – away he got caught in the exchange and smith pressed the advantage who you know smith was still pretty fresh because for the most part he'd just been on the defensive all night taking a beating i mean he got kicked with everything in the book it was unbelievable but anyway i'm going to run out of time here so we'll kind of wrap that up so respond to me talk to me about mma because i enjoy it i enjoy talking to people about it um i, I go to several forums online and of course follow us on mutantville.com if i get some responses to this video uh perhaps i'll do some more videos in the future uh, i also follow boxing you know i'm looking forward to uh, the great israel vasquez versus rafael marquez fight this weekend on showtime so there's a lot of fun things coming along and uh, if you're a fight fan if you're into mixed martial arts if you're into boxing talk to me let me know we'll get a lot of dialogue going and uh 
see where it goes from there. So some fun, fun things coming along. See you next time from uh, MVP and MutantVille.com.